I'm Joya Delgado Harris of the American Cancer Society, and I'm pleased to moderate a very special panel aimed to provide women an overall understanding of how we can take control of our breast health. Joining me are Dr. Richard Winder, Chief Cancer Control Officer of the American Cancer Society, and Dr. Lisa Newman, Director of the Breast Oncology Program at Henry Ford Health System and longtime society volunteer leader. Drs. Winder and Newman will be addressing some of the most commonly asked questions regarding breast cancer screening and what it means to different women. And we're also pleased to have with us Lauren Jarrell, Samantha Elmore, and Ginger Krawick, who will be asking those questions most important to them. So let's dive right in, shall we? Dr. Winder, the Society updated its breast cancer screening guideline for women at average risk of developing the disease. Can you give a brief description? First, this is a very strong statement about the value of screening mammography, uh, actually showing that its value may have been underestimated in some of the recent research. Second, the discussion about screening mammography should begin around age 40, and women 40 to 44 should have the opportunity to start screening during that interval. But by age 45, if a woman has not already started, we recommend that all women begin screening every year, 45 till 55. And the key to that 55 age is really menopause. We use the age 55 as a marker at the age by which almost all women have reached menopause. After menopause, women can transition to being screened every other year, although we do give the option for women to continue annual screening and a decision with their clinician. Very importantly, we recommend that women keep screening as long as they're well, healthy, uh, and have at least a 10-year life expectancy. And we give some guidance uh, to clinicians in the, the document itself about how they know if a woman is likely to have 10 years of healthy life in front of her. So that's the key. Uh, we, we clarified that mammography holds the key to early detection, not clinical breast exam. Uh, or self-exam, we didn't revisit self-exam, but uh, that's part of a pre-existing guideline. So the key is screening mammography according to those guidelines. Dr. Winder, I'm under 45, and so according to the guideline, uh, I don't need to begin screening for another five years. Can you talk about why the change from 40 to 45? Sure, it's, it, they're, they're really a, a few things. First of all, uh, when we last did the guideline in 2003, we were relying on large randomized trial data that looked at the evidence in 10-year increments. Now, with lots more real-life uh, information from a, a whole variety of research studies, we can look at the risk of a woman for breast cancer and the benefit of mammography, frankly, year by year by year by year. So uh, that's allowed us to tailor in, or individualize this guideline. But I want to really emphasize the only difference between what we're recommending for women 40 or 44 and women 45 and older is that uh, because the risk of breast cancer is substantially lower in your early 40s than when you get older, women should have a chance to participate in that decision. Uh, the, and appreciate that uh, although there is a small chance that you could develop breast cancer 40 or 44 and a small chance that you would be benefited by a mammogram, avoid a breast cancer death, uh, you have to realize you have a one in five chance that you're going to have a false positive exam, uh, need additional imaging, may need a biopsy, uh, and the, the attendant uh, worry, anxiety, and fear that might go along with that, or even complications of a biopsy, although they're infrequent. Uh, so we expect, frankly, that the majority of women will want to start sometime between 40 and 44, but we also respect, as long as a woman understands that there, she's giving up a small amount of benefit to wait to start at 45, we respect that decision. But by age 45, we recommend everybody start. But I've known and lost several friends that were diagnosed prior to even turning 40. So why aren't we suggesting that women get screened as early as their 20s or 30s? Breast cancer can occur at any age. However, the risk, as Dr. Winder was mentioning, definitely rises pretty steadily as we get older. So it's a significant risk in our 40s. It's an even higher risk in our 50s and in ages beyond the change of life, beyond the menopause. And mammograms will therefore be more likely to detect a problem, a significant issue like an early stage breast cancer in women who are older. If we commit the youngest women, the women in their 20s and 30s, to getting routine screening mammogram at regular intervals, we then have to be concerned about the risks of 
unnecessary radiation exposure to this very young breast tissue, which can be harmful. And we have to worry about the risks of false positive or false alarm findings on these mammograms that may actually end up outweighing the very small likelihood of identifying a breast cancer in a very young woman. Dr. Newman, earlier you mentioned something about a false positive. What exactly is that? Yeah. So that's a great question, Samantha. Um, it is critical that we clarify the terminology. When we talk about a false positive on a mammogram, we're basically talking about something that turns out to be a false alarm. Anytime an abnormality is detected on a mammogram, we have to then work it up to figure out whether or not that abnormality is a cancerous problem or a benign non-cancerous problem. Because sometimes totally uh, non-cancerous fibrocystic changes will show up as abnormalities on the mammogram. The only way we can distinguish whether or not an abnormality is a cancer is by doing other studies. Sometimes this means that's that the woman has to go through additional compression views, magnification views, which can be more uncomfortable. Sometimes a woman has to have breast ultrasound imaging. Sometimes she has to undergo an actual biopsy to confirm exactly what that abnormality represents. If the abnormality turns out to be non-cancerous, we call that original abnormality on the mammogram a false positive. So a false positive does not mean that we're finding a cancer that isn't really a cancer. It just means that we had to work up an abnormality that turned out to not be a cancer happily. I'd really like to go back to talking about cancer risk increasing with age, because I'm even older. Why does the new guideline recommend screening every other year for women over 55 instead of continuing annual screening? We had the benefit of some new research. Uh, not the first group that's looked at this, but the largest group of studies ever to really examine this issue of the screening interval. So Ginger, about your question of risk, it's important to understand that the risk of breast cancer does not determine how often you have to do the test. What determines how often you have to do it is how rapidly that breast cancer is likely to progress. What's your window of opportunity where the cancer is still curable? Uh, and um, so if you're at high risk, uh, uh, it's important that you be screened uh, and that you may have to start earlier, but how often you're screened is really a question of the rapidity with the, the speed with which it progresses. And so in that postmenopausal group, what our new research that we commissioned showed from a very, very large group of radiologists who followed women who've been diagnosed with breast cancer is that women diagnosed two years after their last mammogram have the same breast cancer characteristics as women diagnosed one year after their last mammogram. No higher rate of positive lymph nodes, no higher rate of uh, larger tumors. Uh, so. The good news here, and it is good news, is that we actually have a longer window of opportunity to find these cancers when they are still fully curable without needing more aggressive treatment. It is important to emphasize, though, that because there may be a very small additional benefit of continuing with annual mammograms in this postmenopausal group, we included in the guideline for a woman to choose with her clinician to continue annual screening, and we support <laughs> insurance coverage for annual screening beyond 55 as well. These are great questions and very informative answers. Thank you, everyone. This is one of three segments focusing on breast cancer screening for women. I encourage you to watch the other two segments where we talk about insurance coverage, women at higher risk versus average risk, and breast self-exams and clinical breast exams. Thank you for watching.